This former parliamentarian stands 6 feet 8 inches tall and certainly stands above the rest. His first parliamentary exposure was in the year 2000 when he was appointed opposition senator by Patrick Manning. In later years, he served as minister in the Prime Minister's office, government senator and minister of public utilities and the environment. He also served as local government minister and minister of agriculture. In 2007, he ran for the general elections and was sworn in as Tobago East Member of Parliament. By 2010, he decided to opt out of active politics, but this does not mean he is not still working for the people of Tobago. He is Mr. Rennie Dumas, popularly known throughout his home village as Stretch, a name given to him by his late mother. Well, I'm, I'm from Plymouth. I was born in Bethesda, which is a different um, village, but for all practical purposes, a part of Plymouth. Uh, born in Bethesda, grew up in Plymouth here. Most of my life experiences would have been in Plymouth. So you would have gone to school in Plymouth AC. Learned to play anything like football or cricket on the playground we just left. Uh, we would have had the community centre be where you had your experiences. And beginning to learn about things like the village council, principles of governance and so on there. His parents, Mr. Alwyn St. Clair Dumas and Miss Dinah Veronica Sandy, ensured young Rennie learned the importance of family values and being respectful to his elders. In Rennie's case, the entire village indeed raised the child. My mother and father weren't married, but I was never a single parent child. <laughs> Everybody owned me and I own everybody, in the sense that there are traditions in the community, I don't know if they still hold, but I'm the first child of my father, the second child of my mother. Basically, I was owned by my great-grandmother, Margaret Bob. She would have been the one who would have taken first responsibility for me. So when it was time to head out to school, kindergarten school, She'd have been the one who paid the first penny <laughs> to a woman named Teacher Eugenia. Each of those two families have something like 13 children. So I would have had maybe 10 aunts, and both of them have more boys than girls. So I would have had something like 10 aunts and nearly 20 uncles. <laughs> <laughs> My mother is, was almost well, I was six, six feet, and my size was well, maybe a little bigger. So if you, if you face in that, I, I couldn't outrun my mother until I was about 15. She used to play cricket and everything else. So she could throw well, and she could run well, and she heavy enough. So. You weren't behaving very much off key at all. <laughs> no matter how big you get, your parents are your parents and, and you have to respect that. And there was, like I said, there was no distance really with my father. You knew that I had a responsibility to get to my father's house every Friday. You go in there to start your study program with the newspapers. So you go in there on the Friday to make sure you read the newspapers, to come back on the Saturday and Sunday for your exam. So you, <laughs> you had to be able to say what was in the week's newspapers by Sunday, right? So that the concept of distance between children and parents and grandparents and so on wasn't real for me. Perhaps after being part of a large family, Rennie was inspired to have a large family of his own. He is the father of eight children and looks forward to more grandchildren. My children are close to me. My children are near me. In fact, some people feel I have them too close to me. <laughs> but they are close and, and that is important. Rennie attended Plymouth Anglican Primary School, 
where he first became aware of his responsibility to his peers and believes his involvement in politics is as a result of its social structure. I don't think there was ever a time when you were not told that that is your responsibility. You, you were deemed to be more gifted than most and therefore having the responsibility to see about the others. I had a, a teacher, uh, Mr. Carrington, who was the principal. He would have met us at school when we were about seven to eight. And I think he would have been the one who introduced me to reading beyond the, the school readers. But he was also the one who insisted and told every other teacher and every other child in the school that he has a responsibility to be in the politics and to be responsible for all of us <laughs> so that from then it, it would have started there. It is possible that Mr. Rennie Dumas began his political career from a very tender age. At age 12, he was an officer in the village council was active in the different sporting clubs around, and though described as quiet, found his voice in secondary school. He later became student guild president at university for three years and headed the teachers union in Tobago. Well, Rene, well, I could say stretch. Stretch and I go back a very long way. From since Bishop's High School, we went into the chin service together, and then we went into politics together and went into tutor together. Stretch was not, uh, you could say, you didn't see the, the leader that he was to become. You didn't see it in him at first. An unfortunate incident occurred in Rennie's youth, which some say was a turning point in the young man's life. It helped mold and shape him into the leader he has become. When we recognize uh, how he persevered through that, uh, and when he came back to school and so on, you saw a difference in him. It probably matured him. And, uh, and then he, when we left school, he was, uh, he was such an initiator in certain things and so on that uh, you recognize that this is a person who you could count on to, to really and truly lead to Bigo. And I think it's at college that uh, stretch leadership qualities really came out. Because for the Spain Teachers College, we came in, we know it's a two-year program, and we were the first year. The second year, who was supposed to be the more senior person, they had to take a back seat to us. And you could say stretch and uh, another Tobagonian, deceased now, Alston Baker, actually ran that college. If you ask me, well, Mr. Mundy, the principal, then principal, is deceased now. But you will always see Mr. Mundy consulting with these two young men um, when he has to make decisions. Rennie refined his leadership skills while at Teachers College. He was the organizer for both the football and netball teams, took charge of fundraising ventures, and even organized graduation ceremonies. Stretch, as he is fondly called, was always looking out for someone else, a trait many of his constituents from Tobago East appreciated. Many of us teachers owe our success to Stretch because Stretch was one who organized a Tobago study group and persons like, I was very, very weak in math. And because of Stretch and the group who I was able not to be referred in math because they said, no to be going and going back and feel. We can't have a four to come down to be in Trinidad and feel. So we used to have a lot of fun. She is a person who loves fat, he liked to fit. But uh, when it came to studying, he said, uh, we, nobody is going to fit. He's a, he's a very caring person, I would say. Knowledgeable and always aspire for others to follow. Like, for, for instance, like, if he's taking a step forward, he's not going to leave you there. He wanted to step with him. And he always encourage you to, to aim for higher heights, right? 
Rennie continues to work in his village. He is one of the founders of the Plymouth Bethesda Heritage Development Foundation, which began around 1996. The foundation's goal is to enrich the lives of villagers through outreach programs. On afternoons, he spends time with the youth pan side, providing support and encouragement. Relationships with the community is important. I try to help with the, uh, the youth steel band on the road, try to help with the young people at um, the, the time during the vacation and so on. Because primarily a lot of people give a lot to me, so I try to to put something back. You must call men like Moving Elder, Winston Dillon, Lytton Stewart, people who invested in you, and invested in you because they thought you could invest in the community. You'll be feeling them not to do that. When he's not looking after the needs of the community, Rennie takes time out for himself. He enjoys reading, exercising, and of course, a good lime with friends. My time now is since I'm not as strong as I used to be. <laughs> it's, um, really, it's reading, talking to people, um, watching the, the movies, watching the, the depictions. I, I am taking the time to revisit all those classics I read since I was eight years old to now. I'm right now looking at Ulysses the, the, from Homer, reading it again, just by it again and reading it. Getting back into feeling what this thing is about, you know, the, the life is a very complex and interesting thing, you know. Every time you visit what the masters had to write, you learn something. And of course, I try to get into the contemplation of the spiritual without being, without being too bound up with what some people call religion. Rennie Stretch Dumas enjoyed being a parliamentarian. As a young chap, he believed more could be done and becoming a parliamentarian presented the challenge for him to do something more. I feel that being a parliamentarian puts you in communion with people from all over the country and gives you a really countrywide view and countrywide sense of responsibility. It meant that you were trying to predict actions that you expect and then trying to ensure or guarantee, if you wish, some level of safety, some level of removal of risks, and of course, the permitting of certain investments when you came to economic areas, as well as looking at the whole uh, framework within which things were done, the regulatory framework for life in the country. I think it's an immense responsibility that has to be taken seriously, and I think I did. Mr. Rennie Dumas worked on bills, projects and programs that would later change many systems to how we know them today. We went into 2007 where the government expanded its role. I was placed then as, just before that, as Minister of Local Government. And through the work in local government, you were able to have the whole country look again at local government. The whole consultations on reform of local government, handing of power to the local government in certain areas. The question of professionalizing the local government systems, bringing in five, six professionals like the lawyer, the engineer, the medical doctor, etc., into the local government system, enhancing its reach, starting the regional development plans in local government. All of those things, as it were, <laughs> were things that I was able to contribute to. There's also the question of what we have to do with our domestics. I think we started a conversation there that is still going on. The question of reform of the the legislation for labor. We started some work in that and it's going on. The fair share, I see it's now adopted as government policy. So there are a number of places, a number of directions. So you're in charge of NETCO, uh, the setting up of NETCO, the establishment, the bringing it up. CPEP, I was part of that. The reforestation program, I initiated that. Mr. Dumas was also instrumental in ensuring public servants no longer waited in extremely long lines around Treasury building in Port of Spain to collect their salaries by check. And I remember insisting on going to the cabinet and getting it clear that we stop that kind of pay by check where people were getting shot and all that, people were trying to rob them and take away their money and made sure, I think the headline then was making sure each citizen is a full economic citizen. Rennie Stretch Dumas is described as a committed, analytical individual, a good listener, and one who is always willing to help. 
These traits have undoubtedly aided him as he developed into a parliamentarian. And even though he admits his tenure in parliament was stressful, it is an experience he does not regret and is willing to take on in the future if the opportunity presents itself. We are a mixture of the design, the natural, and the acculturation. And this culture turned me into a people servant and therefore that's what I do. <laughs> that's what I do. So when I'm not doing that, I miss that.